This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Squarespace.com, Netflix.com, and GoDaddy.com. Coming up on today's show, Angry Weasels in my... No, we got peer-to-peer -peer secrecy, some tools and tricks to keep your notebook from overheating the weasels in your lap, and the usual helping of free software and quite the stack of your viewer questions. Hang up the phone and zip up your pants. That's so rude, Techzilla starts. Welcome to TechZilla, I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont, although uh, according to last week's credit, my name was actually Roger Chang. Why, Roger, you've changed. I know. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> We've fix got it. a horrible show lined up for you That's today. Awful. Well, it's awful. A Dr. Horrible show? Ooh. I wish. That would be so cool. Hmm. Neil Patrick Harris, we love you, dude. It seems actually everyone took a trip last week, except for me. I had the joy of teething and Dr. Horrible. But your, your teeth, you're just cutting your teeth now? That's kind of weird, no, right? No, no, the small creature, <gasps> the baby. Oh. See, I'm told to actually treasure right. teething since soon my son will be a teenager and will hate me and everything I do. You went to Montreal. Roger went to Comic-Con. Who I, had more fun? Um, Probably Roger. I kind of wish I had been at Comic-Con, but I was on vacation, so it was still nice. I ate some poutine, and I tried to speak some French poorly, and um, yeah, but he, Roger got to see Felicia Day, who's a good pal of mine. I hear you ran into your good pal. You're name yeah, dropping no, now. Yeah, no, I am name dropping. Felicia Day, she's a good friend good of mine. Good pal, you know, we hang out sometimes. When I was in L.A. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, yeah, it was. I had a good trip, and Roger obviously had a good time. He got to see some of the Dr. Horrible cast and their panel, and he went on a bunch of cool stuff like that. So, Yay. damn you, Roger. I'm surprised Roger's not bringing the uh, Comic-Con post report. Though you could actually check out iFanboy for a really good one. Excellent. And I suspect Very the Totally true. Rad Show crew's on that, too. Yeah, I put a ton of uh, Flickr photos up for my trip, anyway. You but I'm sure you can find plenty of Comic-Con <laughs> stuff up there, too. Look, here's another Quebecois person speaking French. You can't tell from the picture, but you might suspect it. Man, I cannot speak French at all. Well, actually, French people say that Quebecois folks don't really speak French, either. But that's a what long story. What does that story. mean? Tell you when you're older. Okay. On a final note, our Build a PC segment, sponsored by NVIDIA, will be delayed by a week as the parts we order wind their way through the tubes and the internets. Our apologies for the delay. We promise I promise you, it will be fabulous. They got clogged in the tubes? I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> you need to plunge them. <laughs> Gotta plunge those tubes free. Anyhow, I think it's time we start helping some people. What we need here is an act of Congress. Yes, actually. Who should we help first? Uh, let's see. Our first emailer seems to be quite angry with you. Uh-oh. What else is new, right? <laughs> Who isn't these days? CJ writes, Patrick is sorely misinformed if he believes that a quad-core gaming system doesn't benefit from the two extra cores. Perhaps he needs to take a look at what the boutique builders are using in their top-of-the-line computers. Oh even yeah, if games, that's a good indicator. Yeah, even if games don't fully utilize the full power of a quad-core processor today, a few do, those extra cores will always come in handy for regular day-to-day -day use outside of gaming. Yeah, I'm a moron for not spending somebody else's money to get a quad core, especially CJ, since you might win our badass monster gaming machine sponsored by NVIDIA. And having spent a few months with a spiffy quad core powered boutique -ish PC on my desk, I can vouch that A, they're tremendously fast, and B, many of them cost as much as a reasonably good used car here in San Francisco. <laughs> and they're especially fast running Firefox 2.0 and iTunes and Word. I also hear they're very good for gaming. Apparently. Actually, they're really good for encoding, too. They're also very good, those boutique builders, at getting folks with mad cash or a high limit on their plastic to buy their fancy boutique cases and spiffy wiring and stuff, which are all wrapped around the fabulous quad-core processors. That said, yeah, we could have gone with a Core 2 Quad Q6600 running a 2.4 gigahertz for 185 bucks uh, street, or an Intel Core 2 Quad Q9550 running at 2.83 gigahertz for $550, or better yet, rip that plastic through the machine and send yourself into debt forever. A 3 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Extreme QX9650 for a a mere $1,020 before taxes and shipping. But you know, we went for the highest clock speed we could get on the cheap, which we think will benefit most of today's games a bit more better. And you know what? When a 3 gigahertz or faster quad core parts gets much cheaper in a year, we might just drop one in. And in the meantime, we got like $800 to spend on something else, like a fat monitor or, oh, I don't know, two fat monitors or or maybe more memory. pizzas. 40, I like that thought. So by the way, CJ, you see those red stripes in here wrapped by the blue and green stripes? That's a uh, core two processor versus a bunch of quad processors. So yes, actually, on some games, quad processors are faster. But look at that. A Core 2 E8500 is looking pretty darn fast. 
In the meantime, CJ, I tease, I kid, uh, I, I fence with you. Don't be shy. Send us your list of parts for Gaming Ring because we're curious. You can battle about them in the forums. Um, but, you know, yeah, we could have gone with a, you know, there's a lot of really expensive parts we could have bought that would have given us an incremental in performance improvement on a couple of games. But, you know, Roger and I apparently were just cheap. So, moving on to something that is actually quite inexpensive and quite amazing. We want to take a moment to uh, thank one of the sponsors of today's show, Squarespace. Many of you know I can barely program my way out of a bag with a map and an instruction book. Now, Squarespace calls it a publishing system. It makes it sound hard to use or for big honking websites, but Squarespace is a website building tool for anybody looking to build a blog or a portfolio or pretty much any kind of website, big or small. The latest release is really slick. It hit the nets last week. Uh, it's, it's through the tubes and right to your doorstep, and it offers what they call a, quote, uniquely flexible, unquote, tool that brings pretty much amazing, sophisticated websites within the reach of people like me that can't code their way out of a bag. Now, some clicking and dragging, and you can pretty much have the cool guy functions found on some of the most popular pages on the internet. It's really slick, and it's really, really easy. Squarespace doesn't care if you're a blog or a gigantic business or a blog that wants to be a gigantic business so you can be number one on Twitter just like Veronica. It just makes it easy for just about anybody to build pages that are pretty amazing. And especially so when you think about it, that you're doing it yourself rather than hiring a small army of talented programmers. You can explore the tool for absolutely nothing. Do us a favor, check it out, squarespace.com. Support our, well, support us by supporting our sponsors. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. Today's selection, Notepad++. Things like grammar checking, image embedding, and multilingual support are great if you're punching up a new entry for your travel blog, but they're not so great if you're scripting a new website or writing code for your job. All those extra characters word processors add to put that WYSIWYG touch to all your documents is just a train load of pain for any web designer or coder. Just ask them. What you need is a nice, clean text editor that still has the power and flexibility to get things done in a timely manner. Enter Notepad++. This open source text editor was designed for coders in mind. It supports syntax highlighting for languages like C, C Sharp, C++, HTML, Java, JavaScript, Perl, and PHP. Plus, if you're hardcore enough, you can define your own language syntax with the user language define system. But that's not all. You also get auto-completion, bookmarks, split-screen editing, spell checker, hex editor, a tab document interface, FTP browser, and support for various file formats, including Unicode. Yeah, it's pretty lead stuff, but you know what? If you're typing code 24-7, you want to at least make sure you've got the right tools in hand. So if you're in the biz, give Notepad++ a try. It's not like it's going to cost you anything. You've been getting your media center on, your fabulous, like, virtual lifestyle in the living room thing. Oh, yeah. Big oh, time. yeah. Oh, yeah. Ready for an email question? I do. We have an email question just about that very thing. From Zach, who wants to know what media center software he should use on his Mac. He just got an alpha copy of Boxy, and he was wondering what Veronica thought of it. I want to watch movies and photos primarily. However, music playback would be good, too. All right, Zach. Yeah, Boxy is a fun little program, I've got to say. It's pretty, like, the, the people behind Boxy basically want to replace Front Row. Right. Which is a fine application for looking at pictures and movies. Yeah, it's especially good on your Mac because you can use your Apple remote with mm -hmm. it also. Boop, boop, and if you boop. don't have that, uh, you can also use a keyboard, which is very handy. Wouldn't recommend using a mouse, but... That's beside the point. The Boxy software is a media center suite that not only lets you view the content on your computer, but also view recommendations from people online. And uh, so it has that whole social networking aspect you built have in. You the best desktop wallpaper. You like that? I like that. What about my icons? You like my icons? They're so cute. It's like... Anyhow, it'll probably be easier to explain, so let me just open it up. <laughs> Here we go. So you have a login right here. There's my, my, my mug right there. And you can actually build your whole profile on their website at boxy.tv. Oh, so, so it's not just media software. It's oh, like no. web 2.0. Oh, no, no, no. It's web <laughs> 2.0 also. So let's see what's getting in here. I really like the interface, too. So this is what you're confronted with when you first um, open it up. Uh, one thing that I have to mention is that the product is still in alpha, like Zach said. So if we hit some bugs, don't be too surprised. But I think we should be OK. Alpha basically means it's not done yet, but it's free, and it's fun to experiment with, and it shouldn't right. kill anyone in your building. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, the login screen, like I showed you, you just log in with your password. And you can add multiple users, so you can access all your different accounts mm -hmm. from the login screen. So if you've got, like, you know, if you and your wife have different collections, you can access them that way. So that's very handy. Uh, the top recommendations are the first thing you come across. So here's my recommendation from Andrew. 
So he recommends uh, Daft Punk, which is great. Great album. And then below that, you can see your friend's activity, all the different media that your friends <laughs> have been surfing. So apparently someone's listening to um, MTV Unplugged by Brian Adams. So Sweet dude. Is the recently added, is that something you've added in there? Or is that something other people have added? Because I see a... Recently added, album. yeah. This is all my music that oh, I've recently had scanned. That's so funny. What? I listened to Alan Parsons' project, okay? And... Um, Against me rules. It's all by, it's all um, alphabetical there for the most part. And then underneath, you have your recently used. So you can see the different media that you've accessed recently. So I've got like a couple photos, some video. Oh, look, it's me on Texilla Daily. Cat pictures. Lots of cat pictures. And so on and so forth. And then now, if you want to go up to uh, back to the menu, you can check out the video section. And now you always have an option of viewing not only the uh, content that is on your, your computer, but also stuff that's streaming online. Cool. So say if you want to view your videos on your uh, local drive, you can do that. So let's go check out um, local videos. And you can pull up your iMovie stuff too. Pretty much anything that doesn't have DRM on it, you can and view. look, a cat. <laughs> oh, you want to see this? Uh -oh. All right, hold on. So you load it up. I don't know if there's any sound, but this is Mr. Little Jeans, and he's going kind of nuts after a fly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then if you want to get out of the video, you hit escape or back, and it actually continues playing the video mm -hmm. in the background. Oh, cool. Let's see. Let's look at something a little more high quality. Watchmen trailer. It can do uh, 1080 HD video, which is great, so it looks just like it would on your uh, home television. So basically, which is really nice. it's your local media. It's online media. It's your friends making recommendations. Mm -hmm. It's you checking out your friends' feeds or what they've been playing recently. Correct. You can make recommendations, and it's absolutely free. Yep. What's and the catch? What's the catch? Well, no DRM content works. Okay. So anything that you purchase on the iTunes Music Store won't work. But anything you download on over eMusic, for example, will work. Let me show you some of the internet music stuff because it's pretty cool. So here you can see different channels from all different uh, I love the sources. Fact that the Watchmen video is still playing in the background. Exactly. Isn't that kind of cool? And you can stop it, too, by hitting space bar. Nice. If you don't want it to keep playing, or you can just let it play in the background. Um, the last.fm integration is one of my favorite parts. So we can go to my profile here. And you spend a lot of time on last.fm. I, I, everything I listen to is pretty much on last.fm at this point. I track <laughs> everything. Even stuff that I listen to on my iPod gets scrobbled. She may not be on AIM, Twitter, Haiku, Plurk. <laughs> <laughs> email or AIM or IRC, but she will be on Last FM. Right, so you can pull up all your like most recent top albums and go through all of those and see everything there. And then it brings up most of the time, it might be taking a while because we're going over Wi-Fi here, <laughs> but it'll bring up like album art for the band you're looking at. Let's the see filthy, if nasty back. studio Wi-Fi. Exactly. Uh, pictures are another really cool, it always goes into, let's take a look at internet pictures. Hey, we were talking about my pictures from Montreal, <gasps> right? And it does a nice little Ken Burns type <laughs> thing. If we hit, if we hit play, uh, slideshow. It's this crazy statue on um, Saint Denis, I think. I think so. That's the hotel I stayed in. How fabulous! Purple. <laughs> and then, see, this is this is awesome. Air Canada on their flights from Montreal to San Francisco have power in USB. Mm. What the heck? Why doesn't every freaking airplane have that? Anyhow, so I think this is a really, really great uh, media center solution. Uh, it's great, especially if you can hook it up to your television. Right. It's kind of it's kind of the thing where you need to be savvy enough to want to do that all the time. Not a lot of people do want to hook up their laptop or their PC to their television. Well, my wife and I actually depends. watched all of our media off a of Mac Mini for like two years. Mm -hmm. I was connected to our HDTV. Yeah. There is actually one one caveat we should point out. What's it that? is currently uh, Mac only, right? No, it's Mac and Linux. Really? It is. They just came out with the Linux release, and they're coming out with uh, the Windows release in uh, very soon, and they're going into public beta by either late summer or early fall. Cool. So be able to sign up now. But actually, um, I think we might have a little surprise for people later in the show. I don't want to give it away yet, but it'll be cool. I think ultimately they're going to want to be on set-top boxes right. and be software that runs on your on your Comcast box or something like that. But right now it's on your PC, and it's a lot of fun.
Yay. I highly recommend you check it out when it does come out. Oh, another cool thing is that it's based on XBMC, which is an open source project for uh, running Media Center stuff mm -hmm. on your Xbox. So it's got kind of that whole vibe to it. It's got its open source yeah. in this. It has a very fun interface, and I think that especially combining the social media stuff with it is going to kind of take it to the next level over a lot of the other internet streaming and downloading set-top boxes that are out there. What's the web page? The web page is boxy.tv, B-O-X-E-E.tv. Keep an eye on it, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye on that. I hear we have another question. We do indeed have another question. Another video email, that is. <gasps> Take it away, Eric. Hey, guys. Just a quick question for you. Sometimes when I'm on a Skype call, I would like to share some audio or send some audio through the Skype call. And I'm not exactly sure how to do it or if it's even possible. Can you guys help me out? Thanks. So to clarify, Eric would like to know if it's possible to pipe audio through a Skype call so that the person you're talking to can hear it. Is that possible? It sure. Sometimes it's got to be a way, right? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's something, something to be careful about because sometimes if the stereo mixer um, in your audio properties in Windows is turned on or in some, depending on whether it's like a third-party application or, or the regular Windows uh, uh, sound settings, you can actually have everything mixed together, which can be really embarrassing if you're, say, watching something naughty while you're having a Skype call uh, with your mom. What are you insinuating? Who does Not that? You. Someone I, someone I know, someone I know. It, it oh, tell just, us a story. No, I'm not telling this tell story. Tell us a story. Because he might find out and then he'll kill me oh. and bury me someplace Sport. cold and dangerous. In any case, it's definitely not Roger. You can try enabling the stereo mixer in the record section of your audio properties in Windows. Um, the audio is going to sound like crud. Really? Why? Even if it's coming from your computer? and Well, it's going from your computer uh -huh. into Skype through the internet to your friend's Skype, which oh, basically... Oh, but people are so used to, like, crap streaming internet radio at this point. Who cares, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 last thought of them and Pandora. I mean, true, but I, I'm just I'm pointing just out that you know, if you think you're going to have like the disco mix party going on while you talk to your bud, it's you know not going to. It's going to basically going to be this sort of compressed, squeezed streaming. Well, I know, I know that it, it has to be possible because on our on our Warcraft and Trillo server. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of our guys actually does have a separate music account that he right. pipes in music. So when we're raiding and stuff, we have like a little soundtrack going on. Well, there, I mean, there are a whole bunch of third-party applications, some of which are actually still being actively maintained and sold out there. So we'll put a couple links uh, up on the website. OS 10, we haven't had as much luck what about with that. Audio Hijack Pro. Yeah. Or Soundflower? Is that Audio another Hijack one that might do that? Audio Hijack Pro is, you know what, we'll, we'll play around with Audio Hijack Pro again. I, I wasn't happy with what I did last time, but Audio Hijack Pro hates me. It's a really? wonderful program, it just doesn't like me. Oh, I have a lot of luck with that actually because I use that for podcasting, yeah. for taking um, Tom's audio for Sword and Laser off Skype and into, um, I record it all through Audio Hijack. That's her science pod, science it's fiction It's a science podcast. fiction fantasy podcast, all right? It's, just it's not awesome a science name. podcast. Well, I was trying to say science fiction. Uh, but well, anyway, it's completely nerdy and awesome. Hard. But so we use Audio Hijack and it, it takes sound from one source it's to another source within your computer. Up. It kind of routes your sound card stuff, I think. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool. It basically allows you to tap into the audio stream. Rogue Amoeba makes uh, uh, hijack audio hijack pro. You can definitely check it in and we'll put the links to those plugins up on the website. Now, if you want to get your 15 seconds of internet fame, send us a video. All you need to do is record yourself in front of a video asking a question no longer than 15 seconds, then upload them to YouTube and email us with the link with video question in the subject line. And no attachments, we'll not even look at them. We will discard them immediately into the ether. She just gave me the hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as an added incentive, I'll be giving away Boxy invites to 25 people at random who email us with video mail questions that follow the rules I just mentioned. So don't be shy. Send us your video emails, and you might get yourself a Boxy invite. Ooh. Ooh I told you that was a super secret surprise, didn't super I? Super secret surprise. They hooked us up with that so you guys can get into the alpha. It's going to be awesome. Now it's time to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Transfer your domain to GoDaddy for as little as $6.99 and get a free one-year extension plus guaranteed renewal pricing. <laughs> GoDaddy.com makes transferring easy and offers loads of extras, including hosting, a five-page site builder, complete email, total DNS control, and much more, all for as low as $6.99. What are you waiting for? 
plus enter code TECH2, that's T-E-K-2, when you check out and save an additional five bucks off any order of $30. Some restrictions apply, see site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Support us by supporting them. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. Today's pick, GetHuman.com. I have to say, this is probably both the crappiest looking and also one of the most useful websites we've talked about on this show. Get Human allows you to do just that. Figure out which combination of phone buttons will connect you to an actual living, breathing person that can answer your questions. Despite the spammy looking front page, navigation is actually very easy. Either type in the company whose phone robot you're seeking to circumvent, or click on the letter it begins with from the list below. Not only will you find the correct sequence to use, like hitting pound, zero, or just waiting, you can also see the consumer rating and customer service number. Clicking on the link for the company brings you to a page where you can rate your experience calling in on the helpline and see what other people have written before you. Rating guidelines include, was the agent understandable? How long did you wait on the line before you got a person? And a few other little added gems there. So if you're sick of playing the waiting game when you're on the phone with customer service, Get Human should be your first stop before you make the call. <laughs> All right, you ready for some more questions, my friend? I'm ready. <laughs> Bring them. The next cry for help comes from James in the British Isles. James writes, it's become quite clear that the government are teaming up with ISPs in order to punish anyone caught using file sharing programs. I'm worried about what information can be discovered. If the government can detect torrent packets, what can others find while snooping around? I've heard that DNS configuration and encryption can be quite valuable in protecting yourself online, but I'm unsure where to start. James. Let's take a deep breath. Start having our Paranoid thoughts, and paranoid thoughts can be incredibly legitimate, actually, James. Um, maybe a little less so in the UK than, uh, say, in China. Um, and any place where people sharing information that is really unliked by the government can get them crushed. Not to take anything away from the moral importance of your ability to swap files using peer-to-peer, -peer, but let's, let's make one thing clear. File sharing is not illegal. Using BitTorrent is not illegal. However, engaging in the transfer of copyrighted material without the owner's authorization is illegal, at least here in the United States. So, well, Yeah, we could say for all intents and purposes that, like you said, you're under some kind of tyrannical regime right. where you want to disseminate information to mm -hmm. the public and you don't want the government tracking you. There's a legal use of BitTorrent that you could do, or like a video right. of the government doing something wrong. Yeah, or, or it could be something as simple as wanting to browse for information on how to set up your own bank account because you have an abusive husband and you don't want him to kick the snot out of you um, when he finds that you've been surfing websites. Um, to bring up a, an example from someone who, who, who used to watch a show I worked on in the past, um, if you want to surf anonymously, there's a lot of stuff you can do. There's anonymous browsers, there's going to someone else's website, there's going to public facilities. Um, uh, Tor, actually, torproject.org is a great way to hide your tracks when you're online. It essentially uses the onion routing system and the idea is that you lock into Tor and it basically protects you from being sniffed out at what you're doing. Not going to help you with your peer-to-peer -peer, uh, bit torrenty ways. As a matter of fact, I don't think encryption is going to help you a lot. Um, because there's packet analysis, basically the packet sniffers that kind of monitor activities at ISPs can look at the behavior of your packets without actually being able to break the encryption on the packets and be, basically be like, that nah, looks like peer-to-peer -peer activity, why don't we throttle them? Um, more importantly, the whole point of peer-to-peer -peer is bringing usually a bunch of strangers together to allow them to swap files, which basically means eventually a narc's going to find their way in and blow the whistle on your activities. So. What can you do? You can use private, you know, peer-to-peer -peer sharing networks. You can get together a bunch of friends and only, you know, meet in private areas. And that way, actually, when you know the government kicks in the door and disappears you all, it's much simpler because they can disappear you all out of a single room at once. Um, if you want to talk about DNS stuff, DNS configuration, and how it impacts security, I would go straight to docspar.com, which is Dan Kaminsky's website, who has forgotten more about DNS than anybody on the planet has ever remembered and it's a really cool website. He's the guy who actually came up with the recent, basically ex it basically opened up the fact that there are some pretty gnarly things going on with the way DNS is currently configured. Uh, Open DNS is definitely worth checking out, uh, period, um, but we'll talk about that on another show. 
Before we go on, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, one of the people that makes this episode possible. Remember, without them, you can't have your weekly Tuxilla fix. It's time now for our Netflix sponsored movie pick of the week. This week, Flight of the Navigator. The Flight of the Navigator is a tale of a 12-year-old boy, David, who is abducted by an alien spacecraft and transported eight years into the future. Due to a freak accident, the ship loses its data banks and all the information necessary to get David back home the story in David's head, making David the Navigator. Adventure and crazy antics ensue, making Flight of the Navigator the perfect family flick for movie night. And don't forget to check out the other 89,999 titles Netflix has to offer, including Blu-ray, meaning you're bound to find any title you're looking for. Plus, with 40 shipping centers, almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. And shipping both ways is free. Plans start at $4.99, but as a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free trial by signing up today at www.netflix.com slash Techzilla. All right, Kenneth, you ready to answer some uh, tech questions? Well, I sure am, Patrick. <laughs> Was that not like the worst imitation you've ever heard in your life? That was so weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that a toaster on the back of that? Thing? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. So they have a uh, Battlestar Galactica Frack and Cylon toaster, brand Cylon into toast, <laughs> only one production run. If you went to Comic Con and you have this toaster, I will pay you good money for it. So um, call me or more like email. I want it. But anyhow, uh, let's jump in to the next person in line for some therapeutic technology aid. Daniel writes, hey guys, I have a question. I need to get myself a new motherboard with full PCI Express. I went 16 lanes. My current one only supports up to eight lanes of video goodness. So when I replace my motherboard, I plan to upgrade my processor too. And is there any way to replace without having to reinstall my operating system? Thanks, love the show, keep up the good work. Boy, thank you, Daniel. So, um, there's a boneheaded simple way to do this. It might not actually work. Just swap out the parts and restart your machine. One of two things is going to happen. <laughs> it's going to start and it's going to go, I found all this new hardware. Give me the drivers, please. Or you're going to get a drivers. big black space with nothing going on because the operating system went into some sort of kernel panic of joy and just refuses to ever boot again unless you swap in all your old parts. So, one, this is important. Back up your files. Two, Swap them out and see if it works. Three, make sure you download all the drivers to a USB thumb drive or burn into a disk before you potentially disable the functionality of your motherboard. Um, and you're almost invariably with that many parts, the motherboard and the processor are going to have to reactivate your Windows installation. And of course, there's also going to be a crud filled registry because all your hardware entries and drivers are still there all over the place. And of course, you've got all your old software and just the usual bit rod. So maybe you might want to think about reinstalling your operating system. And another option is to use something like PC Mover, Laplink, we love them. But you're going to have to do a new installation of the operating system first in a new partition and then transfer from the old partition to the new. You know what? Trust us. The best thing to do, this is a wonderful opportunity to give Windows a clean, fresh start. Just get your end light on, that sounds nice. slipstream that installation, and just make everything clean and new because BitRot just sucks. And basically what you're talking about doing is cramming a bunch more stuff on top of a system that's probably could use a little bit of cleanliness. It makes it sound like you're putting the, like clean sheets just fresh out of the dryer onto oh, totally. your bed for the first time and snuggling up all nice and cozy. That's kind of like what a clean OS install is like. Trust me, she speaks truth. One more question? I think one more question would be good. All right, All right this last question comes from Xander. <gasps> His parents must have been a Buffy fan. <laughs> you think? I like, question, I like names that begin with X. Xavier? Yeah. I just like them. I just think they're cool. Anyhow, um, exactly what options do us laptop owners have when it comes to keeping our cool, besides moving to a colder area? I heard about something called laptop cooling stands, but how well do these function? Xander. Um, well. If you own. A MacBook Pro, yeah, or a MacBook, Are and you find yourself now? melting. Oh. Oh. Possibly oh. the simplest and most effective thing you can do to help keep the heat down is to basically put a pen, pencil, or makeup brush underneath it and get some air in between the bottom of the notebook and your tabletop. That this, works. of course, will not help a lot with your lap. <laughs> yeah, there's a few different options though, that you can actually purchase yeah. um, that will protect your thighs too. Because you know, all your not only your thighs are going to get hot when you're sitting there with a hot laptop on it all day. Speaking right, Pat? of weasels in my pants, ah! 
Sorry. <laughs> The Belkin laptop cooling stand, uh, it can sit on your lap or on a table, and the single fan will help keep the temperature down, and it powers directly from the right. USB port right on your laptop, so that's nice. It'll run you about $30, too. Uh, it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's also going to cost you some battery life because it's been in those fans, but... If yeah, you... it's kind of circular, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if you don't... But the other thing is, like, you know, you can turn the power down, you can not run movies, you can... Turn the brightness down. You can, like, put your jacket on your lap that's and then your notebook, more. but... You know. No, and I wouldn't put a jacket on because a jacket would insulate the heat even more. Sometimes I care less about frying my notebook than I do about not frying my body. Okay, anyhow, and Antec also has a series of notebook coolers, and they're a little more suited for laptops of all sizes. Yeah. The last Belkin one is kind of more for like 15 inches and under, right. and the Antec one can handle like, you know, 17 inch and up, but they'll kind of like overlap off the side of the thing. And that has two fans, and it's a little more ventilated also, so you can, what? No, I'm thinking about repurposing these sort of radiator cooling fins that are designed for, um, uh, basically for like race vehicles. Yeah. Into something you could sort of put, a, it's just, you know, one, it's frustrating, yeah, like a, like a you know, it's, let me just let this go. But the idea is like basically putting cooling fins underneath your we notebook. Should, you should build that on, on system. It's, it's a strong possibility. That would be really cool. The only like downside then is like, You'd have to make it folding or something, or you'd end up with like a three inch high notebook. Yeah, well, whatever. And I also, I have one um, that I use at, at home and at the office. It's the Griffin Elevator. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have any fans or anything, but it keeps it nice and elevated off the table so you get more air circulating. Right. And so that's nice. You didn't mention if you have a Mac or a PC, Xander, but if you're on an Apple notebook like one of these, I suggest installing SMC Fan Control. This is a great little <laughs> app. Do you want to use it to jack the fans up to cool the notebook or to jack the fans down so you can actually hear what you're typing? Um, jack the fans up. <laughs> to cool the notebook. Always put the jacking of the fans up. You can, it actually makes the fans rotate faster so you get a higher yeah. RPM, up to 6,000. And so you can control them independently. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're going to be working more or if you feel like it's getting hot, you crank them up and you can see the little temperature gauge right, right. there in the app. And I've been Plus using that one for years it and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of satisfying. Yeah. I haven't found a good Windows counterpart yet for that, so if anyone out there knows of one, please write in and let us know so we can tell Xander. Texilla.com. Actually, Texilla at revision3.com. That works too, though. For that. Yeah, now I'm like thinking, like, what would be, you know what, I'm just going to let this go. But just about anything that gets airspace in between the bottom of your notebook and your body or the desk will help. We live, we love, we learn from your questions. Do us a favor, email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Check out product reviews, how-tos. You ask us, we'll do it. And thank you for all of your ideas for events we should hit. Why doesn't two or 2,000 of you email us and, and tell us of your decided need for Roger and I to attend SEMA, the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers, excuse me, Market Association, which is basically the biggest car show on the planet. Oh, jeez. There's really no good reason for you to go to that. No. That is not in our wheelhouse at all. Nope. But it'd be nice if they asked. I'm going to Leipzig. Oh man! <laughs> You're going to be like passport with NTGS. The, yeah, I, I'm pretty. I'm going to be sleepless, basically. <laughs> yeah. So send us in your emails and video and questions. And she never had a time zone or a biological circadian rhythm again. Yeah, I'm just going to be like some kind of weird, cracked out, like <laughs> twitching, like a twitchy lot. monster that just comes in here, like, where am I? What show am I doing? Twitch, huh? twitch, twitch. Where, what? What day is it? <laughs> Even better than Veronica, <laughs> sleepless and out of her mind, is a video question, because we want to see your pearly whites on screen. Remember, upload them to YouTube and send us the link. No attachments, please, because it's hard on our email servers and the IT guys yell at us that we have to buy them beer or they'll make the show disappear. Actually, they've never threatened us, but we kind of buy them beer anyway. They threatened anyway. me. It's good to they keep your IT people. They threatened me one time. They did? I haven't told anyone. Oh, after that thing. <sighs> Yeah. Don't forget to catch Wine Library Reserve this week. Gary Vaynerchuk gives us a short course in three gigondas. Wine's worth exploring if you can handle the euro. If you fancy yourself a wine connoisseur, you definitely owe it to yourself to check out the latest Wine Library Reserve. And as always, you can visit our forums at version3.com slash forum, where I think a thread is starting right now on the Veronica incident. Very shocking. Very, very <laughs> shocking. More details on the site. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont.
I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the earth move under my feet. Somewhere out there beneath the pale moonlight. Thanks so much for watching, guys. She's Veronica Belmont. I'm Veronica Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. Someone's thinking of me. It's so your and eyes get a little bigger when you do that. <laughs> we got capture and speed going, guys. We're starting on your camera.